Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat for Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we have the second race of the playoffs for the Cup Series at Richmond and the first race of the playoffs for the Xfinity Series, which our team is not taking part in. But we had subscriber Cool Beef, yes, Cool Beef, in the car. As Richmond is one of the worst tracks in the Xfinity Series I've had, and it would show because he would actually run into some issues in as he came out of turns for actually overcorrecting the car down the front straightaway, and Cool Beef actually crashed out uh, here as he crossed the line. This was just barely past the midway point of the race, I believe, now. So he was out 38th here for him, unfortunately, here in Richmond. So a very rough race for us in the Xfinity Series. It's kind of been up and down throughout this whole Xfinity season. But we crossed the line in Cup Series, qualifying with a 21.128. And we go P22. Last time at this racetrack, we won. So certainly still have some high confidence coming into this one that we can lock ourselves into the round of 12. And on the pole, we got Kevin Harvick. Welcome to Richmond Raceway in the Federated Auto Parts 400. Tonight we make our final stop at this three-quarter mile track and a win at America's premier short track will move one of these drivers into the round of 12. Let's go racing. All right. Thank you, Rick Allen. We're ready to go green for the Federated Auto Parts 400 at Richmond International Speedway. Ryan Newman is happy with us, so that's always great. Kerb Bush was pretty fast in practice so we might have to watch out for him and Clint Boyer who DNF last race is already in a big hole in the playoff situation and now it's about to get even worse our teammate starts at the back which means that stage one and maybe even stage two he's not really going to get points that definitely no green. points for Clint Boyer in stage green. one now is ready to go green at Richmond as the green flag is out and we are on our way for the second race of the playoffs Kevin Harvick won last episode to lock himself into the round of 12 and he uh, defends that win with a pull here in Richmond, but immediately you see Denny Hamlin up in the view ahead. He had taken Harvick into the turns 1-3 wide for that lead now as we go down this back straightaway here running the Aeros paint scheme in tonight's race now as we come through turns 3. Like I said earlier, we won this uh, race last time here earlier this season at Richmond, so certainly the confidence was high that we could make something happen, so I wasn't too concerned. I definitely messed up my qualifying lap, so I wasn't too concerned with starting down here in, in the 20s, so obviously we can definitely work our way forwards and hopefully be a contender maybe by the the time we get late in the stage two now has come through turns three and turns four. William Byron had climbed up to P2 and then he would get into the mix of battles and whatnot but we climbed up to P14 as we came through on lap three and continued our climb forward. We got to the inside of Chase Elliott who was a big factor in the last one at Las Vegas. We had now moved up to P11 on lap 10 of this race. Byron had actually started to fall back a little bit there. The AI for some reason liked to jump up top like you see the 24 and up ahead the 11 and the 88 were doing and they lose so much time every time and that's really kind of how I won last time here in Richmond. Obviously, at the end on a late race restart, the AI around me decided to jump up to the top and it allowed me to build up a gap. But we came through a little bit later now, actually making a pass on the 24 of William Byron. So we were moving our way forwards uh, quite well now as we came through on now lap 13. Martin Truex Jr. had taken the lead at this point. Harvick second, Hamlin third, and Bowman up in fourth as Bowman continues to lead that Hendrick Motorsports Club as we come through now on lap 19 of 24. Running P6, we'd passed Denny Hamlin as well now as we came through uh, out to turns four on lap 19 Bowman up there and I believe P2 is a caution though would come out late here in stage one and this would force a two lap dash to end the first stages everyone everyone pitted so I decided to take uh, two cans of fuel four tires obviously we would come out P5 on that inside lane thankfully now as the green flag is out the two lap dash for the stage one victory is underway Harvick my teammate right in front of us I'm gonna decide to decide to give him a shove down into the corner and he's gonna take it three wide with the 19 of Truex and the 88 of Bowman for the lead we always see aggressive restarts here at this racetrack now as we exit turn two three wide for second place with Truex and Bowman Bowman gets clear for that second position Harvick goes all the way to the top lane there's the AI for some reason at this track love to do that and they lose a ton of time every time they do it because now Bowman takes the lead at the white flag here in stage one as we look down to that bottom. Harvick has to be up top this time for Bowman. We send it up the inside of Kevin Harvick as we exit turn two. Heading down this back straightaway side by side with our Stuart Haas racing teammate for P2. Now as Bowman's up top but we don't have the speed through the center of the corner to get anywhere close to the 88. So Alex Bowman will come through to win stage one as we get P2 here in stage two and we should not have been anywhere near uh, P2. It should have been like a P6 or 7 or so. Uh, so I was very, very delighted 
with a second place finish in the first stage. Obviously, no one was coming to the pit lane. William Byron gets a stage point. He comes into this race, I believe it was nine points behind the cut line. So Byron in dire need of a good run here today so he doesn't have to go into the roll having to win now. He's getting ready, though, to go green for stage two. Clint Boyer did not get stage points, so he finds himself in an even bigger hole now after that DNF in Las Vegas. His second stage, though, is underway on this front row with Alex Bowman, hoping we could clear him down into turns one. Unfortunately, couldn't quite make it happen. As we actually made a little bit of contact with the idiot of Alex Bowman. That kind of messes me up because he's, he's sideways on the exit of the corner. And now we're back side by side for the lead with the 88 of Alex Bowman in that nationwide Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports as we come through out of turns four. And we go a little bit up the track and actually get into the wall on the exit of the corner. Newman just behind me there as we go down into turns one. A mistake on my part and that allows Hamlin to take over. P3 is Kyle Busch behind us sliding big time there on the inside of his teammate of Eric Jones as you make a tiny bit of contact with Truex. The car was getting a, a pretty bit, a, a pretty loose on the exit of the corners there as we come through out of turns four. I decided we might need to tighten up this car a little bit later in this race. Now as we came through though on lap five we had actually continued to find our way forwards past Truex. Logano had taken the lead at this point as we had passed Bowman, Harvick and whatnot. Now as we came through on lap eight of 22 in the second stage still running P3 behind Denny Hamlin as Logano, oh my goodness, Hamlin checks a big time in the rear of Ryan Truex as Hamlin hits him and now we're sideways on the exit of the corner spinning into the outside wall. Hard contact with the outside wall and that's going to bring out a caution here in Richmond. 16 seconds of damage. The DNF rule will come into effect. We're going to have to give up two laps with my uh, custom DNF rule as I was caught completely off guard and I came out of turn two and just lost the car. There you see the reason why Ryan Truex was stopped in the middle of the corner without a caution. Hanlon slams into him and then on the exit of turn two I was looking behind me and I just lost control and uh, obviously hit the wall. We had 16 seconds of damage which means we had to give up two laps. So obviously this was now two laps later. I was coming out of the pit lane. Hanlon was still leading at this point after just slamming into the side of Ryan Truex. So all of a sudden, our whole race gets completely turned around now has come through. Uh, this was actually in the final moments of the second stage now as I went down into turn three. Unfortunately, we did not get the caution that we were hoping for. So we're going to come through at the end of stage two. Still two laps down as Boyer gets me at the line. Uh, obviously, he got P7, so Boyer gets stage points. And it's going to be helpful for him, but he's going to have to win at this point now as all of a sudden our race has just been completely flipped upside down. We would get the lucky dog, though at the end of stage two. So we're going to start the third and final stage. Only one lap down here now, as obviously we will take two cans of fuel, four tires. I actually did make a wedge adjustment and put it down, even though we lost control of the car from it being loose, but I decided to put the wedge down anyways uh, now as we get ready to start the third and final stage. So basically, this third and final stage is just about hoping for a caution as Ryan Newman would actually lead the way. But if you guys are kind of relatively new to this career mode series and wondering why I went two laps down, is basically I have my own custom DNF rule because I don't feel like I should be able to plow into the wall like we did there and then just be able to pit and get out of it, uh, you know, without any consequences for my own mistakes. So basically, if I have an incident and come out of it with 10 to 15 seconds of damage, uh, I uh, give up one lap and then if it's any, uh, if it's from 16 to 19, I give up two laps, uh, and then obviously if the damage exceeds 20 seconds, then I consider it a DNF. So basically, when it's a DNF, I, I literally pull off to the side of the track and let the race finish. I don't think we've had a DNF actually in NASCAR Heat 4 career mode, but we've had it uh, a few times, I think, in the NASCAR Heat 3 career mode. So obviously at this point, though, I was working my way forward throughout the field, which it didn't matter at this point. Bubba Wallace was actually leading me at some uh, kind of midfield. The back runners are having a moment there with myself, though, down this back straightaway into turn three, but we were having some of those midfield to back runners actually running up front there, as I think there was some pitch strategy involved as Bubba Wallace continued to lead now as he came through on lap 71, still running a lap down, just hoping we would get a caution now as he came through running behind Eric Jones on lap 72. We've gotten into him quite a few times this season as we exit turn four. The caution comes out, and no, no. Tyler Reddick is a lap down. There's two drivers in front of us a lap down, which means we do not get the lucky dog, so we're still trapped a lap down here with 28 laps to go. So I decide we're going to take a risk here and take the wave around because everybody was fitting. So we take the wave around and we'll be put back on the lead lap and we have to hope for a caution very quickly because the right rear tire is down to 45%. So within the next 10 to 15 laps or so, we were going to have to make a pit stop. So obviously, we're back on the lead lap, but if we don't get a caution, we're going to have to come to the pit lane and we're going to give up and end up giving up like two laps so obviously the green flag back out here with now just 24 laps to go we're back on the lead lap so we're going to get every position possible but we need that caution to come out and that's our biggest hope as we go through on the top lane gaining 
a ton of positions now, and we would continue to show enough move forwards here on this restart, climbing up all the way to P25 as we came through on lap 82. Alex Bowen actually in the lead as we hit the wall there on the exit of the corner, and now the caution comes out here in Richmond, exactly what we needed. It was actually for Tyler Reddick there in the 31st place, so now the caution comes out. We're on the lead lap. We have given, been given a second chance, and we would come to the pit lane for four tires, two cans of fuel, repairs and whatnot, and get ready to go green here now with less than 20 laps to go here in Richmond. A big thanks to Tyler Reddick for bringing out the caution because now we got an opportunity as William Byron actually has the lead going down into turns one. But he was taking three wide, I believe, there as it was Kyle Busch, Alex Bowman, William Byron all up there in the mix for the lead. But obviously, we're not focused on that because we have no chance. And thankfully, we had the playoff points coming into this playoff. Now as we actually get into the back of Joey Gates, but we had the playoff points to where we can afford an issue like we had tonight early on at least. Because if we have an issue like this in the next round, we then it's probably not going to go well, but we can afford a bad race like this here in Richmond uh, in the first round, but anything past the first round, we need to be uh, as perfect as possible. Now, as we came through with 11 to go, we had climbed up to P24. Unfortunately, I wasn't moving forwards as quickly as I had expected and wanted to be. Now, as we were passing Eric Jones, we were getting to the inside of Ryan Priest as we went down into turn three, but we were still continuing to move forward. We had climbed to P19 as we came out of turn four, passing Austin Dillon there with just seven laps to go. Kyle Busch had started to drive away Way with the lead. He has nine wins on the season. 69 career wins overall. He's looking to get win number 70 here today in Richmond. We came to four to go. Still green flag racing here in Richmond. I was hoping that we would get another caution. Now Zad actually picked up some damage, got into the wall again, but got into the inside of Matt Benedetto trying to take P16 away as Kyle Busch could not really be caught in these final laps. It was looking like he was going to just run away with this victory at this point. There's we have now taken 16th away from Benedetto and continued running P16 as we came through to start, uh, go through turns three and turns four to start this final lap as Kyle Busch has taken the white flag as he comes through turns one and turns two. Stage one went very well for us. Stage two was looking very well as well until obviously an issue with Ryan Truex and myself losing control put us behind no stage points in stage two and now we find ourselves in P15 on this final lap here in Richmond after we fought our way back forwards as we come through turns three and out of turns four. Kyle Busch win number 70 of his career, win number 10 on the season. We cross the line to get P16 here in Richmond, which I was pretty delighted with after the issues we had. So Kyle Busch with the win, another handful of playoff points to the number 18 uh, car. So obviously Kyle Busch, easy final four lock. We can already tell you that much now. Uh, so uh, a, at least a solid finish for us. We're down in seventh in the playoff standings. 36 points to the good, so we're not locked in on points, but after the race, I said I made a costly mistake on stage two, obviously. Uh, thankfully, we had the playoff points to fall back on, because if it wasn't for the playoff points we gained with those three wins earlier this season, who knows what the situation would have been right now. Ryan Blaney, not very happy uh, after the race. I apologize to him, but as always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, uh, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those would all be very appreciated. Last time we went to Richmond, we won, so it was a big difference here tonight uh, at the short track. Uh, but in the next one, we go to one of my favorite courses uh, on the schedule, and that's the Charlotte Roval, so hopefully we can have a strong car there. Uh, as long as we don't mess up terribly, we will definitely make it into the next round. Uh, so I will see you guys, though, in the next one. There you see the playoff grid. Byron, L by 5. Everyone else is going to have to win, so I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching, everyone, and have a great day.